In this video, I will be discussing the Grand Master's Heed Seal, Seal of Path Opening. What you're looking at is the keyed seal with the script around it and the actual key itself to be used as the seal written out in a sentence from left to right. Very, very interesting seal. Um, this seal is a lock and draws power from Gehinnom, the nightside habitation. If you don't know what that is, shut the fuck up, computer. I don't want to fucking talk right now. Um, what that is, is Weber Falks for Two. It was made by the same authors as uh, Book of Sitra Akra, Grimoire of the Dragons of the, of the Other Side, um, MLO, Temple of the Black Light. They're the same uh, individuals. And this is basically the same current. So Book of Sitra Akra and Weber Falxifer can be worked hand in hand. It's, it's really the same system. It's the same uh, magical system dealing with the magic of Universe B. The magic of the unmanifest, the primal universe, the universe that existed before this current universe. Now, I want to just look at some of the symbols around here. It's very, very interesting stuff. I'm in no position anyway to try to decipher these keys and tell you what each of the one of these mean, but you can use your imagination. There's some runic-looking symbolism there. If you look at the bottom right there, and um, there's another symbol that almost looks like a fish hook um, and the top right. And then there's a thing, there is a... Uh, there is a type of like um there's type of like a spoke with like two lobes on it and then there's another uh lobe with a trident coming out um that's definitely a goddess looking symbol right there um that 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 v like scroll that uterus uh, looking symbol with the crescent moon of course which is not really the moon but a symbol for venus a symbol of the goddess and then the most interesting symbol at the very bottom there which uh, I assume would be, um, uh, it, it's some kind of trident, some kind of f figure there, and then it, and it, the energy goes around, it curls back, while simultaneously it shoots up. So I, what you're looking at is two ways you can key um, the seal. The first one is the actual seal itself with the keys around it, and then uh, below it is the keys written in a sentence formation from left to right. Now, going down the center of the symbol there, you have something that looks like an eightfold star, which looks like a star there. So this could be, you know, the black sun. This could be, um, this could be a black or this could be the black light coming into this physical universe. And at the very center um, of the crossroads in the four blades, you have what looks like a, uh, what, you have a keyhole. And at the bottom, you have um, the only key that is differentiated from the other six. And this has, uh, this key has wings on both sides of it, as opposed to all the remaining six keys has wings on one side. Very powerful symbolism uh, right away. Um, this is probably one of the neat, the most powerful symbols. I mean, all of the seven keys are fucking powerful. But the fact that this is so simple and so easy to draw, this is probably like one of the easiest of the seven um, seals. And all of them are pretty easy to draw on paper. You know, pretty simple. This happens to be one of the easiest ones, at least for me, to draw. You just make a crossroads, make the blades, and then you just fill in the blades with the keys and the star. Uh, this prayer is to be combined with the prayer of path opening. And I am of the assumption, even though the authors don't state it in Lieber Falks for two, but this this prayer and the and, and the key go hand in hand together. Okay, let, let me demonstrate for you. The very first line there in the prayer of path opening 
on page 378 of Lieber Falks for Two. The very first line reads, Holder of seven keys, I pray to you, O my holy saint of death. Well, here we are. We're looking at seven keys, right? So what this does, this knocks on the door and petitions the key master. The key master in this tradition being Cain. So you're knocking on the door by saying these words, and you're calling upon the key master, key master, and you're requesting him to turn those keys in your favor. Now, because there are seven keys, this this lock at the center of the crossroads must be a universal lock, a universal keyhole that any one of the seven keys will fit, or maybe it's one of these seven keys but it's kind of like schrodinger's cat like depending on your situation one of these seven keys or all of these seven keys within this seal are going to work magic for you a very simple spell you can do for yourself is to take an apple from a grocery store you know just buy a bag of gala apples for three dollars you know go to walmart or or tops or whatever the fuck they sell apples buy an apple get an apple core because you're going to need to make a hole you're going to need to um, extract the core from an apple okay so get your apple get your apple core and what you do you draw the symbol out on paper then what you can do is in the center of this uh, seal you can write what your problem is you can write please open up this situation for me Cain please open up my prosperity please free me from this bad situation or like I got a court case or something is bothering me or whatever the fuck or like I, I'm dealing with a bad neighbor or just dealing I'm caught in a situation I need help and you can just write what that problem is inside of the seal another thing you could do is you can um write a couple sentences of positive affirmations be like my pathways are opening up for me or things are opening up for me things are expanding for me i have access to transportation or i am getting a car now very important to know magic only knows the present tense do not say I will this or I want this, okay? And fuck those new age fuck faces who put that in their books. Oh, oh, just make a signal say, I want this, I want this, I I I will get this, I, I will get this. No, 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 no. Because all you're gonna do is you're gonna increase your want, you're gonna increase your desire. Okay? Oh yeah, you can do that, but you're gonna want that car like crazy and you're never gonna actually get it if you actually want to get that fucking manifestation you fucking affirm as if it's law as if it's god's law and it already fucking happened i have a car i have health i have prosperity i have freedom you affirm you do not tell the universe what you want but you affirm it you affirm it as if you already have it, and that is how you fucking manifest shit. Fuck! Those New Age motherfucking blinders, those blinder occultists, okay? I'm not gonna name names. They're controlled by these fucking lodges, and they put all this garbage, fucking useless fucking trash, garbage, fucking new age books that don't do shit except fuck you up give you multiple personality disorder and make you want what you want even more without actually manifesting anything for you fuck that shit yes i have a high standard yes i'm a little bit of an elitist only a little bit only a little bit because i care about my current i care about my practice I care about my listeners. I care about you who's listening to this video right now. I want you to benefit from this, and I want you to get the same results that I am getting and that I am creating for myself right fucking now. So yes, elitism in this sense is quality control, but I am not a misanthrope. I am not a misanthrope who would intentionally mislead 
and malign and put up blinders on humanity to fuck them up just to make a quick buck. That is unethical and that is disgusting. That is a disgusting practice that should be stopped. So do not write, I want this or I want a car. You write in there, I have a car. I have this. I have financial freedom. I have. I have. If you affirm it, it will increase. Okay? And, and there's a secret of manifestation that I will explain at the end of the video. I'm going to tie all things together. Okay, you're going to write that down. Then you're going to say the prayer of path opening while you're doing this over and over again. You're going to take your apple and you're going to take in one hand, you're going to take the core in the other hand. You're going to core the apple. You're going to extract the core and you're going to have a big hole, a big hollow in that apple. Okay? Set the apple to the side. You're going to pick it up again in just a minute. You take your apple core and you take your piece of paper and you roll it up. You roll your affirmation around the core of the apple, almost like you're making a Torah scroll. Okay? Okay, so you're going to pretend that you're a Jew for a minute. Okay? I'm just joking, man. You don't have to be Jewish. This anyone can do this. Gentile, any any race, any anyone can do this magic. Okay, so you're gonna roll up your paper away from you like you're making a, a Torah scroll. Okay, and once you got it, you're gonna take your core, which is wrapped with the affirmations, and then you're gonna stuff it back into the hollow of the apple where you just uh, pulled the core from. You're gonna stuff in the apple, and now what you're gonna do is you're going to take a paring knife and you're going to skin the apple. You're going to get some shavings off that apple. Okay? Discard the shavings of the apple. Discard the skins. Do not eat them. Do not give them to your pets. Do not do any of that. That's really bad there. That's, you know, that, that ties you to the spell. That ties the attacker to the spell. And if you're using this for, like, malefica purposes, you can use apples to curse your enemies as well. There and your dog eats one of those apples. Well, your dog can be hexed, or if you eat um, of the apple, then you can hex yourself that way. So, you don't want to do that. So, take the apple shavings of the apple skins and throw them away, or flush them down the toilet, or put them in the garbage, or just throw them somewhere, or compost where you know that your pets and your loved ones aren't going to be able to get a hold of them. Now, you got your apple, right? that's been completely skinned and has your affirmation wound up inside of the apple. You're going to take this apple, you're going to go in the left hand, okay? And you're going to walk, you're going to take off your shoes and socks, and you're going to walk barefoot down the road until you find the nearest, the nearest uh, bog or a little swamp or like natural body of water that has toad spawn, okay? Now, it's very important that you do this this time of year while there are still toad spawn, while there are still peepers out there. You want to do this before they transform into toads, okay? Holding the apple in your left hand, you're going to repeat this prayer and visualize you already having what you have. So visualize yourself having whatever they're having the changes that you want to create, like having that transportation or, or having um, that legal problem remedied for you, or just visualize the change that you want to create with this in your left hand. This is a prayer for path opening. Holder of the seven keys, I pray to you, O my holy saint of death, you are the remover of all obstructions and opener of all closed paths and doors. Here now my supplications. Almighty Cain, Ben Samael, guide me towards the realization of my self-defined destiny. And let your sight sweep the Lord ahead, cutting down all that would hinder me. Traverse of the paths of thorns, bones, and fires, you I pray, in all tracks leading to my chosen destination. Become by your powers and blessings, firmly paved, and my footsteps have been led towards the attainment of all goals, set in accordance with my sorcerer's will. Holy Cain, Ben Samael, opener of the seven paths and seven gates, let now your keys be turned in my favor. Grant me safe passage towards success, liberation, and glory. Lord of the crossroads of death, let the liminal points upon which I walk in your holy name take me beyond the limitations that they cause the fate of men decreed. And force your removal, which is meant to block my path of lawless and limitless becoming. O Lord of Nod, O Lord of Nod, widen now all existing roads, widen now all, all existing doors and opportunities, 
and open now. All new roads create new doorways and new opportunities, doors within doors, so that I, through my warning, shall reach that which I seek to accomplish, and let my success on the paths that to your own crying glory, as I am of your blood, bearer of your mark, firmly to your cause eternally. Amen, amen, amen. Now that last line there, if that scares you, the part about being friendly to your cause eternally, and you're not certain that you want to become uh, a Canaanite devotee uh, for the rest of your life and maybe the next life, you could say something like, do this for me, Cain, and in return I will share this spell with others, or I will share your name with others so others can benefit from your sorcery. That helps just as much uh, validity. Or I am of your blood and bear of your mark and friendly to your cause. But I would leave it worded as worded. I did change some lines in the last prayer where it says, um, open now all roads, unlock all doors. I say widen now all roads because what this does is this empowers the blessings that you already have and all the good things in your life that you already have. This increases it and opens up new doors and new opportunities. So this is how you really milk the maximum magic, the maximum power of manifestation from this particular spell. Now, repeating this or chanting this while walking barefoot, there's a reason why, okay? Because pain is an offering. You can offer your discomfort. You can step on a pebble or whatever like that, you know. You, you want to get uncomfortable. You want to work for this, okay? You, you want to work for this, okay? At least for the first time, okay? I've done this many, many times there. I walk, when I care, cast my apples, I wear socks and shoes now, but for the first time I did this, I was barefoot on the walk back home. And that's a whole other story I can tell you about later. Um, or you could just give them extra tobacco or give them extra cigarettes or candy, you know, or offerings. Well, walk in to that. So, so you've arrived at your destination, okay? And you want to make sure, preferably nighttime, you want to be able to hear the creepers, okay? And then you take the apple there, and you want to gently just plop it in there. Don't fucking chuck it in there like a baseball, like you're throwing, like you're pitching a, a baseball, you know? Don't, don't do that. That'll scare the peepers away. Okay, and don't do what I do either. Like I don't even like the idea of like tossing in there. Yes, I've had to like toss them a couple in there by hand because I couldn't get in there all the way. I couldn't get into like the bog myself or like the or like the pond myself because of, like how deep it was or whatever. But get as close as you can. If you have to drop it, just gently drop it into the water. Gently drop it into the stream. There, just gently plop it in. Okay, gently just plop it in, plop it in the stream there, and walk away, give thanks to Cain, give thanks to Hecate, give thanks to the mighty Hecatean uh, toad goddess manifestation, Tasatala, turn around, and walk home without looking back. Now, there's a really particular reason as to why this works, Okay. First things first, the apple is an excessively, stupendously powerful symbol. I mean, it's in everywhere. It's in the big three Abrahamic religions. You know, the serpent uh, tempted Eve with the apple. And of course, you know, if you're into Cain, if you're into Book of Sitra if you're into uh, chaos Gnosticism, you're on the side of the serpent. You're, you're on the side of Samael, you know, bringing the wisdom of universe B into... Uh, this cosmos, which is universe A. So um, the apple is is a symbol of, of, of you know the divine gnosis, you know, the, the wisdom of the serpent, you know, the bridging of the worlds, the, the gnosis from universe B coming into universe A. Um, another reason too, the actual uh, the the animals the actual animals um, and the spirits that you're working with here, they're, they are um, very powerful emissaries of Hecate. They're the toads there. And what they do, those peepers, they eat the apple and they take in your spell cast at the cellular level. So all those little dozens and dozens and hundreds of little peepers, hundreds of little tadpoles will nibble on your apple, right? And they'll take that in at the cellular level. And when they become adults, when they become 
like um, actual toads, they'll carry that into the ages. They'll carry that into manifestation. And now thinking about the biblical uh, ten plagues of Moses, you know, I would not be surprised if uh, Moses slash Akhenaten was able to cause um, a swarm of locusts or a swarm of frogs there by doing something very similar by by putting like a Torah scroll or like throwing something into a toad pond and then all the all the frogs went crazy and swarmed uh, Egypt. I, I would not be surprised. I'm, I don't know why, but I'm getting that kind of like magic. I'm getting like that kind of black magic uh, coming in my imagination right now. I could be wrong, but essentially that's what it's going to do. I'm not going to, I'm not saying, I'm not claiming anything that you're going to create a, a swarm of toads, even though that'd be really cool. That'd be really badass. To create a swarm of toads there but um another thing too um Tasatawa is the mighty toad goddess she is the lord of all the toads and all the marine and the oxawatls and and the water salamanders and all like the great like marine toads and frogs and spirits there uh, it's a very powerful powerful symbol very powerful symbol the toad there um Toad is also a symbol of yourself. You know, there's there's occult uh, teachings that say that uh, Earth was once a sea planet. Earth was once a gigantic water planet, and we were all like oxawatls at one point. And then um, the, this fucking Yahweh, this this monster, this this alien Anunnaki or Elohim, they nuked the fucking planet. They nuked this planet and evaporated like half of the oceans there and that's how the first land masses was created we were never supposed to be like a land planet we were always a sea planet for like billions and billions of years and then like some space alien comes by and like nukes all the water off the earth and all of a sudden you have uh, land masses and shit like that i'm not saying that's what i believe but it's just a, a conspiracy theory uh, that exists within the occult circles so to keep that in mind Another thing, too, you're combining all the elements. You're combining um, air, the spoken word. You're combining uh, your own magic. You're combining the apple, which is earth and water. And you're actually combining um, it with a very, very powerful familiar spirit who is uh, one of the only animals in this entire world, uh, save from, like, um, uh, what the fucking uh, seals or something that can exist in both the water and the land. Essentially, a, a magical totem that has a foot in both worlds. It has a foot in the ancient world, the, when the world was still a sea planet, and a foot in the new world order, in the new world, which in occult terms is the new world order is when the Anunnaki slew all the titans, nuked the planet, and reshaped the earth in their image. They're creating a universe of order, creating an earth of, of, of order. So Toad has a foot in the ancient world and has a foot in the modern new world or the modern terrestrial world. And they will carry your spell out there. A couple of things you should be really careful of. Um, do not use the same, uh, do not use the same body of water for more than once. For, for different spells. So if you're going to cast a spell for path opening, do not go back next week and cast an apple for prosperity or cast an apple to curse an enemy and the same thing. That will just create conflictions. Now what you can do is you can return and feed it more apples as long as it's the same intention, as long as it's the same spell cast. Now once it's been a year, and the next generation of toad spawns have reproduced, and there's a new, fresh generation of tadpoles, then yes, next year you can cast a new ritual, you can cast a new apple. Luckily, where I live in upstate New York, there's a lot of fucking naturally occurring bogs and ponds around here. So I have like a dozen ponds, like in a four mile square around my home. I can just go out and just walk down the road and I'll pass like three fucking ponds on the way and just boom, 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 just semi-automatic 
rapid fire casting my spells into those separate pawns, of course, separately, of course. And this isn't something that happens right away. This isn't something that happens very quickly. This is something that um, that's going to take some time. It's going to take some months, even up to a year in the manifestation, because you're working with the animals. You've got to wait for those tadpoles to maturate into the toads. A um, couple things to be wary of. Um, you can use it to curse your enemies. Just be very careful of that. Don't drive an iron nail through the fucking apple. God, no, do not do that, okay? That's that's a good way to um, piss off Hecate and piss off Tastawa. You do not want to curse the toads. You do not want to curse the toad spawn. So be very fucking selective with your wording. Another thing that you can do is I like to dust my affirmations with cinnamon and honey before I wrap the scroll around and put that central um, scroll back into the apple. You want to make it as enticing, not invasive, as enticing to the toads as possible. And again, it's up to them. There's a possibility that they can reject your apple. If they don't like it, they won't eat it. But more likely than not, if their intention is pure, they will accept the apple and they will eat it and they will carry forth your manifestation. After you're done with all this, you want to... Uh, Take your remaining apples there, and you want to slice them up, cover them with cinnamon and honey, and uh, give some apple slices to Cain, because this is where the bulk of this magic is coming from. But you also should give some apple slices to Hecate, because you're using her toads to perform magic. And one more thing, the secret of manifestation. Magic is a lot like electricity. It travels the path of least resistance. So even when saying the Canaanitic devotional prayers, I do not affirm lack or give acknowledgement to lack of any kind. I word the prayers in a way where it, where it affirms and expands and strengthens the blessings that I already have in my life. That is why I changed, that is why I changed the last, um, lines of the prayer from uh, where it says um, open out all roads and unlock all doors to I for my one and show each that which I seek to accomplish I changed that to widen now all existing roads widen now all existing doors widen now already established pathways and roadways and create new roads open up new doors open up new pathways open up doors within doors so that I, through my warning, shall obtain that which I seek to accomplish, and let my success upon the paths that your own crying glory is on of your blood, bear of your mark, and friendly to your cause and your father's cause eternally. Amen, amen, amen. Hail Cain ben Samael. Hail Cain ben Samael.